computer so we can post it later and just everybody can enjoy and uh, bear with us as we come online. Our so, first time back in church in thank you for being here. We are glad you are here. All right. Folks, I'm just pulling us up here so we can uh, we can attend to you as well. I see folks are already starting to get on our worship line, so we're glad you're here. Rosita is our reader today. We're glad to have you with us. Say hello, Rosita. Say hello, Rosita. Hello, everyone, and good morning. Welcome back. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to be in the sanctuary, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. I am going to minimize this. Welcome, Jeanette. Welcome, Mary. Welcome. On. Welcome, Nancy. Okay. My wife, my beloved Laura, is actually um, to the side. You can't see her. She's but... excited about that. <laughs> Very happy <laughs> to go back to being unseen. Yeah. <laughs> always felt not not always seen. You can actually actually give us a ring of the bell, honey, so we know you're here. There you go. You can hear her now. Well, welcome everybody. We are so glad you are here. Um, if you are watching on Facebook, please feel free to start a watch party and invite your friends to church. What a great way to do that. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your own living room. You can sit in front of your television, your computer, and then invite other people who know you and might be watching today to join us in worship. So thank you for being here today. Um, we're honored to be in God's presence. We're also counting our blessings to be back here in the sanctuary of St. Peter's. Um, we made the decision a couple weeks ago to try to start a sort of a slow return for us here and get us back into the church building for some broadcasted Eucharists. Um, as much as Laura and I, we're very honored to have you in our dining room for worship. Um, our hearts were yearning, as uh, we think many were, for the opportunity to be in this sacred space again and uh, to proclaim God's praise. So we're glad you're here today and that you can share this worship experience. We hope to as well later in the summer, weather permitting, to have some outside worship um, and we'll be announcing the details for that shortly. But again, we're waiting on approval for our reopening plan from the diocese, and uh, we look forward to having that in hand soon. Once we have it in hand, you'll know more about that process. But we're glad everyone is here with us virtually today. Um, it's great to see people uh, logging on, I'm trying to wave to as many folks as I can. Um, so, uh, so it's good news for that. Um, and I think that's all I need to say. So I think we're ready to worship today. Ready, hon? All right, here we go. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in a song of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we praise you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Also with Let us pray. For God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout out loud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fold of a donkey. 
He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, also because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 145, verses 8 through 15. We will read it responsibly by half verse. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone. And and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord. And your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. And speak of your power. That the peoples may know of your power. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words. And merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The second reading reading for today is from Romans a reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Rosita. Thank you, everyone. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. Son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glut, a glut and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, that wisdom is vindicated by your deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except anyone, the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At our weekly lectionary Bible study on Wednesdays, we 
uh, chewed on these lessons and worked on them. And uh, it arose in our discussions, one of the particular points of resonance that these lessons have, the collect has, to the struggle that many have in this life for sobriety. Focusing on the recovery movement, the summation, one of our class members said, was uh, a simple acknowledgement on the part of the person who is uh, broken and addicted and struggling with that is to surrender to the fact that they are powerless. I can't. Um, to give their, their power over to a higher power, their, their, their direction over to a higher power, for some that is God, others that simply uh, whatever they imagine, uh, you can and then ultimately to surrender that agenda of self to the agenda of the divine. I can't, you can, please help me. And I think in the end, that's what we're really struggling with. Um, with Paul's incredibly verbose delivery of his struggle to do the right thing and knows, knowing that he can't quite get there, um, to so easily fall into wrong patterns of mind and of heart and of behavior, and then to struggle again to find correction. There's nothing we can do in and of ourselves to fix ourselves, to repair ourselves. We aren't those kinds of machines, and we weren't created in that way. Instead, we were created and forged in relationship to God and to each other, and too often we forget that. This pandemic and the time we have been sojourning in the wilderness apart from each other has made me very aware of and sensitive to the fact that um, we have created these long intervals of departure from the kind of community that we yearn for and need in order to obtain that holy correction of God with each other of who we are and how we are in the world. And uh, one of the things we tried to do in the midst of that was instead of looking to weekly worship, instead to look to daily worship, and not just daily worship, but to begin the day to end the day in prayer, the liturgy, and the work of prayer and connection and relationship to each other and to God. If not with each other, then you should know on behalf of you who are watching this, you are being prayed for, you are being held up, and by God's grace, we pray you are being healed by that holiness that comes from relationship with God and relationship with the other. So I've been walking with that and trying to think about that on a daily basis, but I realized and I confess to you that it isn't just a daily need. The more we make this journey through this time of separation, I'm convinced it's an hourly. It's, it's a minute by minute. It's a second by second. Any time increment that you can figure out is an opportunity for us to take to recenter and refocus on what it is we are called to be, which is a person who is in right relationship with the other and in right relationship with God. And that means that we commit ourselves and renew our commitments to acts of service and outreach, to acts of social justice, to acts of connection to each other, to prayer, intercessory and contemplative, to the awareness that we are never a finished work. We are always needing to be formed and reformed into the fuller stature of Christ. And I invite you as we start to formulate what this new chapter of life in Christ is going to look like, for St. Peter's as a family of God, for St. Peter's as a community of faith that serves the wider community in our area, and for the Episcopal Church in general, no matter where we go in this life, no matter what chapters open before us, to understand that God has given us a terrible and generous gift. We've had the opportunity to reset ourselves and our expectations of church, of each other, of self, and ultimately to recenter ourselves on a right relationship with God. And I say it again, a right relationship with each other. Last week, we marked in a feast uh, several saints who are remembered as being proponents of the social gospel. One of those, um, uh, a man named Rauschenbusch, said that if you are pro proposing that you are uh, able to proclaim a life of faith, and yet you are not in relationship with your neighbor, then you are not in a life of faith. I think that's accurate. So here is the moment that we have, this moment, the next, and the next, to hit the reset button on ourselves, on our faith, and our relationship with God, and also our faith and our relationship in and with each other. Simply to acknowledge 
I can't, to acknowledge to God that God can, and then to ask for the help to achieve that. So whether it is today, this morning, whether it is tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, whatever day of the week it is, take a moment, pause, pray, and reset. Acknowledge that we are not in control of our lives. It's okay to be out of control because we are ultimately in ultimate relationship with a God who loves us and adores us and is the one who is in control. And then ultimately we can ask for the assistance we need to address what we need to do in this moment and the next and next. For this moment, we are here in this sanctuary and you are there watching. And we give thanks for the connection we have in that way. And we look forward to a time when we can all be together again in the presence of each other and the living God whom we serve. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Nicene Creed, an affirmation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Prayers of the people. Let us come before God in a posture of openness, expecting the Holy Spirit to transform our lives and to lead us into the offering of our prayers as we respond Hear us, good Lord. Free us from the bondage of our sinful ways, our blindness to truth, our stubbornness and lack of discipline, that we may yearn from the, after the fruits of the divine word and follow its wisdom. Let us pray. Hear us, O Lord. Strengthen the love and devotion amongst family members that forgiveness may heal old wounds and mutual affection pave the way to wholeness let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of our church that there may be mutual respect across and a renewed sense of partnership in bringing God's kingdom into the most troubled corners of our neighborhoods and nation. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Encourage our civic leaders to modify their convictions with compromise that there may be a renewal of hope for those who live in poverty, unemployment, and lack of educational opportunities. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Reveal the unfolding beauty of creation, the uniqueness of seasons, and the joy and wonder of your handicraft that we may delight in guarding these gifts. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Receive those who have died into your arms of mercy, that they may sleep in everlasting peace, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Faithfully seeking the path to new life, let us continue our prayers. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the United Church of Pakistan, the Most Reverend Humphrey Peters, Bishop of Peshawar and Moderator of the Church of Pakistan. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Reverend Andrew T. Gordon. We pray as well for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those on our parish prayer list. Walter, Elizabeth, Don, Dylan, Kay, and Michael, Nate, Fran, Rick, Christopher, Rita, Eddie, Jeff and family, Felicia, Albert, Stephen, Michael, 
Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Eric, Sean, Jay, Ray, Eugene, Edmundo, Kathy, Leah, Susie, Kim, for Andrea and her family, Bo, Anna, and Brian, Karen and her family, Shelley, Scott, Amy, Anne Marie, Sarah, Rini, Peter, Bruce, Corinne, and Margaret. We pray for those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Connor, Jared. And we give special thanks today for the promotion of Austin. For those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Rebecca, Carol, myself, Tristan, Deborah, for those celebrating anniversaries this week, especially Dave and Susan and Brett and Elizabeth, and also a special warm happy birthday to my mother Anne, who is watching today from Ohio. We give thanks as well in this Independence Day weekend for this beautiful country we have been given the opportunity to live in and to offer our service in as citizens. Almighty God, you have given us this good land for our heritage. We humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues, endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. You are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, everybody. And uh, I have a couple of announcements uh, as we move into uh, the Eucharist. One is we have a fun slash fundraiser going on right now. Um, it is a Song of Summer uh, bracket challenge. So as you tender your entrance fee, um, you receive four songs on the brackets that you can follow. And uh, they are drawn uh, to determine what our song of the summer will be. These are all songs that have popular songs that have God in the title. Um, I want to thank our committee that put this fundraiser together. And Kirk Bonamici came up with the idea, so thank you, Kirk. Um, one of the ways we thought that we could ease the ability of folks to participate is if you just note in the comments on Facebook Live or in the YouTube broadcast after this, when we'll upload it, um, that you would like to participate. Kirk will be in touch with you and help you uh, get signed up for it. As well, you can also do that through our Realm Giving uh, platform. Please do um, consider the church, uh, both in this fundraiser, but also in your regular stewardship. We have been so blessed throughout this crisis that this church has uh, done such great work in terms of supporting the mission and the ministry here at St. Peter's. We have been sustained, and we are so incredibly grateful for your support. So thank you very much for that. We praise God for the opportunity we have to gather in his name and as well to be in God's presence to be able to share that bounty with others. So thank you again so much. And uh, just all you have to do is just let Kirk know in the, uh, in the comments section of the broadcast 
that you are interested, we will follow up with you on that. So thank you for being here today. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy home have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Yep. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and give thanks to him. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let Christ the cup of salvation. Please join me in our post communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in 
and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and abide with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone, for uh, attending worship today. I want to thank you for uh, supporting our live broadcast here from the church. Um, please do uh, check us out later on YouTube and like and subscribe. We have an awful lot of content there that's beginning to accumulate. We're glad to offer that up to all. We have some ideas uh, to enhance that, and we're glad to offer that as well. Um, please do keep up with the website and make sure you stay abreast of everything that's happening through the news. We will take a short break and go online with our virtual coffee hour in a few moments. Um, Lord, I will be here in the choir area to do that. So welcome, everyone. Glad you were here. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.